Well, Peter Purvis, let's start with you because, you know, I, I mean, I've written about this today in the Mail. I think that it's very hard for people over 70 to be told, well, you're in the risk group, so you need to stay indoors. And it feels a little bit like, well, we're not taking into account the individual circumstances of older people, the fitness, the health of older people. What, what do you fear might happen as we look towards the end of lockdown? Oh, crikey, that could be a long way off in any case, couldn't it? But I, I think the whole, the whole principle is wrong, that uh, we decide by age whether or not we're going to be locked down for longer. I, I, haven't, I haven't received a letter from my GP saying I'm vulnerable. Uh, I uh, find it difficult to get a slot for delivery from my local supermarket because I'm not in the vulnerable group. So why would I have to uh, stay locked down longer than anyone else? I, I, I so can would I just agree. interrupt and ask a very delicate question, which you can choose to answer as you wish? <laughs> which is that I'm not quite sure how old you are. And you, you look very youthful, but, and of course you say you're not in the vulnerable group, but what, 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 what how old are you, Peter? I'm 81. Right, well, you look, in, I mean, you look much younger than that. You look fit and healthy. Um, but as you say, it, uh, you know, you're 81, so therefore you're in this group, which is considered by your very age to be vulnerable. Yes, uh, but uh, I mean, I, I don't feel vulnerable. However, I'm quite prepared to do the social distancing and all, all the other uh, things that have been put in. But I, I can't imagine why, that I'm going to have to rely on neighbours to do my shopping for me for a, a year or even longer. I mean, what's been mooted is, is really quite scary. And I think we have to wait and see what the details of the proposal are before we get up in arms about it. But I'm not happy about it. Johnny Bull, um... You know, I think my parents are locked away down in Sussex and they're coping very well, actually, and we speak to them every day, but it's not the same as proper physical contact, obviously. Um, you, you're being very resilient. You think you should just grin and bear it? I, th I think you have to, and it's wonderful that, that we've got communications today. Isaac Newton discovered gravity in lockdown with no communications. We've got communications, I'm communicating with you, so it's wonderful. We can all walk every day for a walk, and what I say to everybody is, hello from a distance, and that starts a conversation. And so we have more conversation with people, especially people are on their own, when we're on the walk, even though we're social distancing. We've got to help people to cope with it. And it is difficult. It's very difficult for kids. I think it's more difficult for kids than it is for us old people. You know what? It's a very interesting point, because I've got three sons. You know, they're 26, 22, 19. They'd normally be out all the time with their friends in bars, restaurants, clubs, whatever, university and so on. Uh, I think it may be actually arguably more difficult for, for the it... young than it is for the elderly. Mir Miriam Stoppard... Tell us about the health reality check here, because we know that COVID-19 does target the elderly more than any other group. Well, you see, um, in Peter concentrating on age, and of course a lot of people in the vulnerable group are old, but by no means all everyone in the vulnerable group is old. It's anyone who has a serious underlying condition. You could be 30, 40, 50. And there are some kids, kids with cystic fibrosis are vulnerable and should be shielding. The thing is that the criterion is not wholly age, it's medical fitness. And the best measurement we have of medical fitness, the best yardstick is age because even in the most um, healthy, fit, older person, um, all our systems are in decline. I'm so glad that Peter at 81, and I, by the way, a year older than you, Peter, um, <laughs> you know, we well, are so fit and we're so healthy and we're enjoying life and we want to see our grandchildren, but all our systems. Miriam, we can't I've got have a. It. I've got to jump in. Excellent answer, yes. but we're actually we're going to move live to Colonel Moore's uh, uh, birthday celebrations. This is the flyby which we were promised with military aircraft, which we believe is about to start to pay a tribute to Colonel Moore, recently promoted as of yesterday by the Queen to honorary Colonel, and we're about we think to see the flyby. 
So we're going to keep an eye on that while we talk a little bit more about what is being named the grey lockdown. I mean, it's interesting that we're talking about it on the day of one of the most inspirational Britain's 100th birthday. Um, Peter Purvis, one of the things that um, we've just discussed is whether it's tougher on the old lockdown or tougher on the young, but not being able to see your children and your grandchildren for many older people is it is a real blow, isn't it, at the moment? And we know in Switzerland, grandparents have just been told they can hug their grandchildren if their grandchildren are very young. I can imagine for a lot of British grandparents, that felt like quite, quite a painful thing to hear. Well, I, th I think that one of the big problems for a lot of old people is, is isolation itself. Being isolated means that they don't see people and they don't talk to them and loneliness is probably as big a killer as anything else for a lot of people. They just go into decline because there is nothing to live for, and that, that's really frightening. I, I think that I, isolation... I quite agree with Johnny, you know, we should. The, the, the government is trying its hardest to stop the National Health Service being overwhelmed, and they want to be careful that they don't uh, ease lockdown so that uh, the, the NHS gets overwhelmed. And I support that totally. But I don't think, as, as Miriam Stoppard so sensibly said, it's nothing to do with age. It is really, uh, we are all in decline, but we don't necessarily just go into decline and collapse and finish because uh, we are a certain no, quite age. Quite right, and, and no-one personifies that more than Colonel Moore. Johnny Moore, when um, you look at this guy who's 100 years old, marching incredible. up and down his guard, what do you make of him? He's incredible. We're all 19 years behind him, and we hope we're as fit as he is uh, uh, in that time. He's just incredible. He's done better than Major Tom, uh, David Bowie's Major Tom, <laughs> becoming a colonel. So that's wonderful. Miriam, what do you make of, of Colonel Moore? Because he really has... He's rallied the nation. I mean, he's been the kind of new Vera Lynn. Yes, you're right. I mean, he's an inspiration. What is, I think... Part of it is because he's clearly frail. He's clearly, as I said before, when you get older, all your systems go into decline. But he's got an inner spirit. And I think everyone in the country recognises his spirit.